Hi, I'm Catherine Gladwin, and I'm the author of the number one bestseller, How to Be a Virtual Assistant. Today, I want to share with you how you can set up as a virtual assistant with clients in just 90 days. So first of all, I want to answer the question, what is a virtual assistant? Of course, you can Google it, but there's going to be a lot of answers out there. So in a nutshell, a virtual assistant is a self-employed business owner that supports other self-employed business owners and small businesses with various aspects of their day to day running. So it could be inbox management, diary management, it could be bookkeeping, it could be email marketing, proofreading, creating documents, client liaison, managing projects. I could go on for minutes with all the different services that you could offer. Now, I'm going to guarantee there's something in your past or present that you currently do that you can offer as a service to other business owners. So first, what I want you to do is to decide on your services. So think about all of the different tasks that you've done in previous roles or in current roles. So maybe you've been a PA previously, an admin assistant. I've mentored people that have been dental nurses. I've mentored people that have come from working in retail. There's things that we do in our everyday job that we just do naturally and think that it's not important. But let me put it this way. OK, so if you worked in retail, there's probably occasions where you've had to manage staff, where you've had to work out. OK, so Lorraine's gone off sick, so I need to bring Derek onto the shop floor to help things out. You've coordinated people so that the business keeps running. That's a skill. And that's something that business owners can't be doing all the time on their own because they've got a business to run they've got other elements of their business to run they've got to be bringing in the money so there are things that you can offer as a virtual assistant so don't give up now thinking there's nothing I can do that will help people there is so to help you work out what services you can offer as a virtual assistant go to the link somewhere down there and you can download a free list of over 80 80 services that virtual assistants can offer and that list is by no means exhaustive. And I'm going to guarantee, so I'm going to bet you a uh, Terra's Chocolate Orange that you can definitely find at least three services on there that you can offer as a virtual assistant. And three is more than enough. I'll wait while you download it. Press pause and come back. Right, so this is the bit where you're probably going to want to pause, rewind, pause, rewind. Go back and back and back because you're going to think I misheard her. Definitely misheard her. So I'm recording this in 2022 and the going rate currently for virtual assistants is between. I'd like to insert a drum roll here, but I'd probably mess it up. So let's just imagine one. So you will be charging as a virtual assistant between 25 and 35 pound an hour. I'm pausing for effect there, but that's pretty good, right? Now, I when I first became a virtual assistant, I was earning minimum wage. And you may well be watching this and earning minimum wage and think, OK, so I can't go in at £35 an hour because I'm currently only on minimum wage. No, that's you telling you you're not worth it. And I'm telling you, you are. Business owners are going to be paying you for the change that you make to their day. You're going to be freeing up their time. You're going to be taking stress away. When you're taking away jobs that they spend far too much time doing, they're able to get on and earn the proper money. So they're paying you to make a huge difference to their business. They're not paying you for how long you've been in business. And they're not paying you based on what you used to earn as an employee. There are virtual assistants, many of us, getting that amount of money. Those that aren't getting it are only not getting it because they think they're not worth it or they're not marketing it themselves properly. I'll cover marketing in another video. But yeah. You are worth between £25 and £35 pound an hour at time of recording. That could well change and the average could be between 30 and 35 <sighs> Life just felt nicer, didn't it? So a little bit more about me. I've already told you my name. I'm Catherine Gladwin and I'm the author of the Amazon number one bestseller, How to Be a Virtual Assistant. So we're going to backtrack a little bit. I wrote that book in 2018, but we're going to go back a little bit further. Here, I'd like to insert like a, but I'm not going to do that either. So in 2011, I started getting severe memory problems. My hair was falling out in clumps. Um, because of the memory problems, I can't remember the other symptoms. I know my periods had stopped. 
what else was it? I'll give you an example, okay? So I found a denim jacket in my wardrobe and I handed it to my daughter and said to her, this is yours. She's like, no, it's yours. You bought it in Birmingham. I couldn't even remember going to Birmingham, to be honest with you. I had no idea where that leather jacket came, um, that, de <laughs> that denim jacket came from. I kept going to the doctors for over a year with these symptoms and they were like, oh, I think you're a bit stressed. This some beta blockers. This some antidepressants. Oh no, it's probably menopause. I was 35 at the time. Long story short, I asked for a second opinion and they found a brain tumour. That was back in 2011. In 2012, I had that brain tumour removed. It came back again in 2014 and I had radiotherapy. I was employed at the time and I was finding work harder and harder and harder. Just getting to the office would take all my energy for the day. So weekends were spent catching up, catching up on cleaning that I couldn't do during the week or trying to catch up with friends, but I was too tired to do it. I'd spend most of my time in bed. I thought, this isn't the life I want to lead. Now, you might not resonate with this, but let me tell you something else is I was a single parent. I had a mortgage, no pension, no savings. So I couldn't give up work. I didn't want to go on benefits because I'd have lost my house. I really felt stuck and I really felt depressed about my life. I thought, I don't want to keep looking forward to the next holiday or the next bank holiday or retirement. And I also don't know if this tumour is going to come back again. Something had to change. I wanted to enjoy life. I'm going to come back to that in a bit. Let's get back to you. So what I'm trying to say is you can be a virtual assistant. You don't need any qualifications. You just need to be confident and competent in the services that you're going to offer. So what else do you need to do as a virtual assistant? And this is going to be relevant to those in the UK. What you need to do is you unfortunately need to register with the Information Commissioner's Office for GDPR, which is modern day data protection. If you don't register with them, they will fine you. If you do register with them, you get nothing. They are modern day bandits, but we got to do it. I think it's about £40 a year. So, you know, it's just like burning two £20 notes, basically. But you've got to register with them. So get yourself registered with the ICO, Information Commissioner's Office, and get your little registration number so that you're all covered. And flick them the bird from me while you're doing it. You need insurance. You need insurance before you take on your first client. You, you never know what's going to happen. You need to be covered. It's highly unlikely that anything's going to go wrong with a client, but sometimes it does. And sometimes these clients go feral, especially when money is involved, their money. People can turn nasty. So insurance is really important. And I recommend policy B, B spelt like a bumblebee, B-E-E. -E. If you mention my name when you give them a ring, then they will give you up to 10% off. So that's policy B in the UK for your UK insurance and mention Catherine Gladwin and they will give you up to 10% off. You also need contracts, legal contracts. I can't supply those. I've got no legal training. It would be unethical of me to supply them because the law changes all the time and there's no way I'm keeping up to date with that. I can't even keep up to date with my audible books. So, but I do recommend Coffee Clatch and I'll put a link down below somewhere if I can um, to the contracts that I recommend. They are at time of recording, they are £50 plus VAT, which works out at 60 Great British Pounds. Now, that's just a one off payment and you get support from them so that if anything ever changes, they send you an update because they are legally trained. So it's like I say, it's a one off payment. You just pay the £60 and you can use those contracts again and again and again with your clients. Lots of different clients. It is well worth it. You might as well invest in that now so that you've got them ready. And when you take on your first client, you can be really slick. Send them the contract. OK, I'm going to recommend that you have your own bank account as well, because if you are using your own current account at the end of the financial year, you're going to have to go through everything and think, right, was that WH Smith receipt? for stationery to do with the business or was it a Cadbury's cream egg because I was hungry? You don't want to have to be going through that. That's why bookkeeping gives business owners stress because they're not keeping on top of it. So open a separate bank account and I recommend Metal, M-E-T-T-L-E. They're owned by uh, NatWest. They come under that umbrella. I use them myself and 
with, when you use them, you get free accounting software as well, which is free agent. And ironically, I recommend that as well. You also need to note that if you ignore my advice and don't get a separate bank account for your business, that your personal account, the terms and conditions of it may not allow you to use it for business. So do check that because you don't want your bank account stopped for any reason. Right, we've done all the boring stuff, right? Now, you've got your services because you've downloaded my thing and you've chosen your services and you've read my download, which gives you lots of advice on what services to pick, why and blah, blah, blah. Do I need to wait again? Did you download that? I'll wait for those at the back. Okay, so we've got your services. You've realised that you are worth the amount that I said per hour. Hmm? If not, send me an email so I can... Uh, check in my notes. Um, you've got your legal stuff ready. You've thought about your insurance. You're registered with the bandits at ICO. What do we do now? Do we just sit? Okay. Do we just sit and wait for people to come and find us? How, how do they know what you're doing? Now, a lot of virtual assistants do everything that I've just said, and then they just sit and wait. And they can't understand why they get no clients. Because nobody's looking for you. You've got to tell them that you exist. You've got to tell people that you're around. And the first people you're going to tell are friends and family. Now, if you go to my website, you'll see the Get Started as a Virtual Assistant guide that I've created. And in it, I've included templates on what you send to friends and family. It's not formal. It's perfect. It worked for me. And templates to send to local businesses, because they're the other people you're going to contact, local businesses. And the templates exactly show you what to say in your emails and they convert so that you can go on and get your first clients. So your first clients, more than likely, I'm going to put a percentage on it, got no proof, no stats, nothing. But I'm going to say 90% of virtual assistants, first clients. I'm going to say 99% because it sounds better. Again, I've got no stats on it, but it's very high. Most virtual assistants' first clients are people that already know them because people that know, like and trust you are already happy to hand over money. Other people, they've got to have a little bit of nurturing sometimes. So first people you're going to contact are friends and family and then local business owners. And if you need any help with that, head over to my website. Link's probably down there somewhere. And look for the Get Started as a Virtual Assistant Guide. Game changer. <laughs> Something else you're going to eventually need, if not now, is a website. Now, don't switch off because at this point, you may well be thinking it's going to cost you thousands. And there is no way you're investing thousands of pounds into something that may not even work. You may not even enjoy being a virtual assistant or you may never get clients or anything like that. But notice I use the word investment. Now, there's gonna, throughout your business journey, you will be investing money all over the place. So your insurance is investment because it's going to protect you. The contracts are investment because, again, they're going to protect you. The ICO is just the bandits. But the website is an investment. You will get the money back. Whatever you invest in your website, you will get it back because it will help you get clients. Promise. The reasons it will help you get clients is it shows your authority. It shows that you are serious about your business, that you're not just making a little bit of extra money on the side before you, I don't know, before you go and do something else. People will invest in you if they know that you are going to be around for a long time. But also the website is your 24-7 shop front. So people can check you out even when you're sleeping. That sounds bad. Your website will contain information on the services that you offer and the price that people are expected to pay. So your rates, in other words, Catherine, get your words out. And it will also include a section about you so people can find out about you. And then that's all the information they need. All they then need to do is send you an email and say, let's start working together. Websites help to convert clients with minimal input from you. If you're not sure where to go for a website, send me an email and I can recommend somewhere. Now, I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. But what I will tell you is if you put the effort in, you will get massive rewards. I've mentored people that are now earning double, triple, 
quadruple what they did as an employee. I had a message on Monday, today is Tuesday, from one of my old mentees and she's just put her hourly rate up and she's now invoicing 3,500 every month. That's a lot of money, a lot of money. But let's remember, if you put in half the effort, you get half the bit out. If you put in half the effort, you get half the rewards. That's what I was looking for. Now, when the going gets tough, I want you to remind yourself why you're doing this, why you want a better work in life, why you want to be a virtual assistant. So write it down somewhere and put it somewhere you're going to see it every day. Perhaps pin it to a child's back because you'll see those devils every day. Put it on the fridge. Put it anywhere. Put it in your car. Put it on the dashboard so that you see it every morning. So, or even put it on your desk at work if you're still employed. And when people come over and say, what? what's that? Secret. Not telling you. It's your secret at the moment. But you can do this. And I completely believe in you. I don't benefit at all from telling you that you can do this. But you do benefit. There's no point in me making stuff up or anything like that. This is more than achievable. And I'm with you every step of the way. Like you, I used to get that Sunday night dread, six o'clock on a Sunday, panicking, having to go back to work, already here in the nonsense conversations, already waiting for the dullness that hits. With most people, it used to hit at three o'clock. For me, it was 11. I'd, just, I'd done everything by 11. I was bored. I wanted to go home. I was tired. I was fed up with it. I couldn't keep looking for different jobs. Something had to change, and I was the only one that could change that. Now, it's not going to happen overnight. I know that you know that. I did have somebody recently say, look, I set up my virtual assistant business last Thursday and I've not got any clients yet. Mm -hmm. You can see the problem there. You're going to have to put work in, and I can help you with that with my videos, my courses, my guides, anything. Just head to my website if you're stuck for anything. Check out my videos. Are you still telling yourself this isn't possible for you, that you're different to me? Mm -mm, you're not. You really aren't. I'll remind you, I had no pension, no savings. I had a mortgage and I was a single parent. My daughter was, I think she was 14 or 15 at the time. She was going to go head off to college and she had aspirations of going to university. She's now 23. But I also had those fears that my tumour might come back, that I could get ill again. What am I going to do about money if that happens? Well, you can earn so much more as a virtual assistant that you put savings away for any eventuality. I've now, since I started my business, I've now had three more brain tumours removed. Two through major surgery within seven months of each other. I'm just recovering from that last one. And I've been in bed for most of those months trying to recover. I've had no fear about having to go back to an office, having to try and get up at 7.15 in the morning, and drive to work and be completely exhausted. I've not had to worry about having to be around people and that overwhelming sense of, oh, I can't be doing this because I've created the perfect work in life. And you can too. You can mould your business around whatever life you've got, whatever desires you've got. One of my favourite sayings is, it's your business, your rules. You can do this.